guitar enthusiasts, we're going to learn how to strum Otis Redding's Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, and I'm going to show you some easier options if you're someone who hates bar chords. So we have a lot of chords in this song, a lot of major chords too, which means we're going to be using a few bar chords, but I'm going to show you some easy fixes to get around that if you're not very good at bar chords. But let's just talk about the chords we're going to be using. We are going to be using an A major chord. Okay, we're going to be using a B major chord. That's one of our bar chords. We are going to have a C major chord, a D major chord, an E major chord, an F major chord, and a G major chord. So basically, all of the major chords for every single letter of the musical alphabet. Isn't that pretty cool? That's awesome. And I really like this song because if you're someone who really wants to get into practicing bar chords, you could play this entire song as bar chords, but we're not going to do that today. And speaking of those bar chords, I mentioned that I would have some easy fixes for those. So if you're someone who's not great with bar chords, what I would recommend doing, and I'll show you an example in a little bit, is I would recommend for your G chord, your F chord, and your B chord to use power chords on the top three strings. So for G to B, then to F. Also for F, you could use the F major seven chord. That's also an option. Now I just checked my notes and it looks like the F chord only comes in once in this entire song over the bridge. It comes after a C major chord. So an easy way to get into an F would be to play one of the F major seven options for that bridge section. I think that's gonna be the easiest way to get in and out of it if you're not the greatest with this F bar chord. So let's talk about the rhythms here. I'm gonna give you two rhythm options and then I'm gonna show you how this is gonna sound over the song. So the first rhythm option is gonna be all eighth notes, okay? And there is a bit of a timing thing we have to be concerned with with this song. If you listen, the song feels like it has like a hop to it. And that usually indicates to us that chords are changing over the up strum. So these strumming patterns are going to be two measure strumming patterns. All right. We're going to have one measure. And then the second measure is going to be doing something slightly different to accommodate for that change. So let's pick an easy chord change here. So we're going to be doing C major to A major. Okay. So let's take that first. Let's go over the strumming pattern. And then I'm going to show you how to apply it to the chord. So the first strumming pattern, very simple all eighth notes. All right. It's going to be one, two, and three, and four, and that's the first measure. Okay. One, two, and three, and four, and all right. And then the second measure is not going to have a down on the one. It's actually going to start on the up, the and after one, it's going to be and two, and then three, and four, and okay. So the second measure again, is going to be one and two, and four and so if I put those together this is what it's gonna sound like ready one two three four one more time okay great so hopefully you understand how the strumming pattern is working. What we're going to do now is we're going to introduce that A chord and the A chord is going to change on the up after four. So the and after four. So it's going to sound like this. It's going to be one, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, again, one, two, and three, and four, and. One more time. Okay. So you hear that it's changing on that up and then the A chord is going to take the rest of the next measure. So it's going to be all right. So that was the easier strumming pattern. This is definitely not a song for an absolute beginner, but that's probably more of like a late beginner strumming pattern. Now I'm going to show you a little bit more of an intermediate strumming pattern. So depending for those of you guys who want more of a challenge, this is going to be a great strumming pattern. If you're not looking for that challenge, that's fine. Just skip right over this part and go to the next section of the lesson. So what we're going to be doing in the strumming pattern is we're going to be adding 
two sixteenth notes, okay? We're gonna be adding one in the first measure and then one in the second measure. Let me show you. So we're using the foundation of the rhythm that I already showed you, which is that one, two, and three, and four, and, and two, three, and four, and. What we're doing is we're adding a sixteenth note on that first measure after the first beat. So it's one, a two. It's like a fast hop. One, a two. Down, up, down. This sounds a lot more like like the actual recording so I would probably stick with this pattern if you can do it and then on the second measure what we're doing is we're adding a 16th on the end of the second beat so it's gonna be and two a two okay I'm um, sorry and two a three sorry <laughs> so it's and two a three and two a three okay and two a three and four and That's the second half. So I put them both together and we're still gonna change that A. That second chord's gonna change on that up strum after the four. So it's gonna be one, a two, and three, and four, and, and two, a three, and four, and. So go back and rewind that as many times as you need to to really figure out the pattern. Again, all of these strumming patterns and lesson notes are on my website. So if it really helps you to see this and sit with it and play with it for a bit, do that because now we're going to move into the actual song. Now the great thing about this song is that the chord progressions are pretty repetitive for the verses and the choruses. So let's start with our verse. The chord progression, it's going to be G and B splitting a measure and then a full measure of B and then it's C and A splitting measure, and then a full measure of A. And then you're just gonna repeat that using the strum, one of the strumming patterns that I showed you. Now the chorus section is mostly gonna be G and E splitting a measure. Okay, we're gonna do that twice. Then it's gonna go to G and A splitting a measure, and then it goes back to G and E splitting a measure. So you can see the only bar chord we got right now is the B chord, and I'm gonna show you what it's gonna sound like if you choose to use that power chord option. So if you decide to use the power chords, G, and B, this is what that intro is going to sound like. It's going to, or the verse is actually going to sound like. One, two, ready, and. So you can see even using those power chords, it sounds pretty good. But now I'm gonna play through the verse and chorus in its entirety using the fuller chords because you're gonna get a much fuller sound. One, two, ready, and. Here we go. gives you a good feel for the timing of the verses and the choruses but now there's something different that's going to happen on the bridge we're changing keys and we're going to kind of change up the timing and the strumming here so i want to make you guys aware of this change so first thing our chords are changing we still have a g chord but now we got the introduction of a d chord a c chord and that f chord into this bridge okay so just be aware of that now the timing on this we do not have chords bleeding over into the next measure. So what do I mean by that? We have our G and our D chord splitting a measure, and we're not hopping the rhythm anymore. We're on the downbeat. So for the strumming for those, I would just do one, two, and three, four, and, and then we have our C chord for full measure, and I would just simply do the down, down, up, up, down, up, if you want to. Okay, so that would be, looks like nothing's gonna change. Everything still remains the same I can't do 
what ten people tell me to do So I guess I'll remain the same And I'm back in two Now if your goal is to push your guitar playing to the next level and really be able to play this song entirely as bar chords, which I think sounds great, I'd highly recommend that you guys go check out my mini course bundle package where I have my power and bar chords, my step-by-step -step system for learning bar chords, but you're also gonna learn lead guitar skills 101, pentatonic scales, how to play solos. You're gonna get music theory 101, expressive rhythm, really learning how to make your strumming come alive. And you're also gonna get finger picking 101 where you can learn how to play along and finger pick to your favorite songs. I'll put a link in the description below. Go check that out and I hope to see you guys in a lesson video real soon.